Hi, this is Cheryl. I'm here to show you how to scan in the Scottsdale Community College Graphics Lab in the Art Building Room AB134. We'll be scanning using Photoshop, so you make sure that's open, and make sure the scanner's turned on, and whatever you're scanning should be face down on the scan bed before you get started. The way you scan through Photoshop is you choose File, Import, and you select your scanner from the list that's under Import. In our lab this semester, all of our scanners are the same. We have the Epson Perfection V750 Pro. So that should be on your list. Click it. And one thing that's probably going to happen to you, just like it happens to everybody else the first time you're logged in, is when the scan window comes up, it's hidden behind Photoshop's um, options bar and toolbar and the panels are also shown on screen and you really can't get them out of the way once you um, start the import process. So if this happens to you, go ahead and close the window and I'll show you what to do about it. Um, you're just going to press the tab key on your keyboard. That's a toggle and what it does is it hides all your panels and tools and toolbar gets them out of your way for a second. If you press the tab key again, they all come back. So you're going to turn them off by pressing the tab key. And then you select File, Import, choose the scanner again. And the very first time that you scan at any of the workstations, you'll probably have the scan, the Epson scan software come up in full auto mode. This is why you really need to uh, press the tab key before you do this because you want to switch from full auto mode um, to professional mode. Full auto mode will just scan the entire scan bed and you won't get any choices um, about um, controlling how much, you, how much you scan, what area of the screen you scan, and you can't make decisions about your output very effectively. So um, always switch over to professional mode you get many more options and before you begin just check under this original section right here that you have these settings your document type should be reflective your source will be the document table the exposure type will be photo and please scan in 24-bit color mode I think some applications can now handle 48-bit color but as a general rule some uh, many places still can't and so stick with 24-bit until the entire world upgrades I'm sure that there will be a headline about it. Um, also, set your resolution to 300 with the following exception. If you are scanning a drawing that you made in pen or pencil on paper, go ahead and crank up the resolution to 600 or even 1200 dpi. It's going to make a very large file, but what it'll do is enable you to keep or to make the artwork look as if it has nice smooth lines. 300 dpi is a little bit low and sometimes the lines will look pretty jaggy. So uh, if you have line art, crank it up to 300, otherwise, or sorry, to 600 to 1200 and otherwise stick with the 300. It's a pretty standard resolution. Um, you'll know, uh, hopefully you'll know if you need to change it. Okay, um, next, press the preview button and that will bring up the preview window and it will pre-scan the scan bed just to show you what's on there. I'm, I've got my wallet on there. It's kind of silly, but it's what I'm scanning. You can scan an object or a photograph. Um, once my preview window comes up, and incidentally, if somebody's been scanning before you, the preview window might come up and show whatever they have on it, uh, whatever they scanned last, rather. And all you have to do to get rid of that is press preview, and you'll get a preview of what you're going to scan. So notice in my preview window, my cursor is a crosshair. And what I need to do is define the area that I want to scan. I don't want to scan up here, so I click and drag a rectangle. This is a loose approximation at the moment. Um, you can move this around or resize it after you draw it. So don't uh, stress too much about making it a perfect um, match. And of course, you can always edit the file in Photoshop if you don't get the edges just exactly right. Um, but anyway, once I've got my basic rectangle, um, currently I'm going to be scanning my target size as original. 
I'm going to be scanning one to one. Whatever size I've defined on the scanner, which happens to be 3.91 right here by 3.60 inches high. Um, so whatever I've defined there, um, since we usually use our printers at 300 dpi, then when I print it out, it's going to be this exact same size. So I scan it in, print it out, same size, um, one to one ratio. But you can use the scanner to shrink or enlarge the artwork as you scan, and therefore you would only acquire the amount of pixels that you need. For example, if I want this little guy to be only an inch high, I don't have to scan um, enough pixels to print it at three inches uh, or even close to four. What I can do is flip the disclosure triangle down for target size right here, and I can set a new target size. So for example, if I were going to scan this at 25%, scaling it down, then I could print it uh, just under one inch. And if that's the size I know I want on my final print, then it's not strictly necessary to scan more pixels than I need to achieve that result. I hope that makes sense. Now in my case, I actually want him to be able to fit on a postcard that is six inches wide and four inches high. So I have not achieved that result with my selection here. And what I can do is start to tinker with the target size. In addition to entering a percent right here for scale, I can enter the actual size that I want. Um, so if I were to type six here for my width, as soon as I click over to type a height, the computer recalculates based on the proportions of the rectangle that I've drawn right over here. So if I were to make the, this width six inches, then the height as I've drawn it would need to be 5.51 inches. Now that doesn't match the six by four goal that I have. So that shows me I would actually need to lose a little bit of height to match the shape of my postcard, the rectangular shape of my postcard. So it would really be closer to that shape is what I need. Um, so that's going to cut off a little bit of the, the applique here, and that's okay. Um, you, can, you can decide to do that now, or you can choose to scan a little bit more than you need, knowing that in the design process you will eventually have to make a choice because you have a fixed piece of paper size and you can't fit this whole thing on there unless you shrink it down. They just they don't match in size. I hope that makes sense. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just expand my artwork uh, selection back to where I'm getting this whole guy plus some of the background. And the reason for that is that I, I'm deciding right now that I want to be able to make that choice later in my layout and edit the composition um, at that point instead of do it now. But I still want to make sure I'm acquiring plenty of pixels on the scanner um, as I bring the image in now. If I don't get enough, I can't make up more later. I will have to just redo the scan. Um, Photoshop can add pixels, but it makes them up by resampling, and resampling usually um, causes the quality of your image to degrade. It does not look anywhere near as nice as if you just get it, get the right number of pixels acquired from the get-go like we're doing now. So right now I could print this at 6.91 inches wide by 5.80 inches high, and I'm scaling it up 153%. Now if I think it's a little too big, I can use the up down arrow here, and I can adjust it. So I'm going to go ahead and scan it 150%. It's actually more than I need, and I will be able to choose which pixels to lose during the design process as I work on layout. So I'm going to go ahead and scan right now by clicking on the scan button. Ta-da! The scan bed will activate and it'll go really slowly over the small area that you chose. And once it's finished, the scan pops up into Photoshop. If I were to press my tab key and bring back my panels right now, I have the same problem where I can't get a hold of the title bar of my window and move it. Not a big deal if that happens, just you can do what I did, repress the tab key and move the window, or 
choose view and fit on screen. And that will move the window to where you can get a hold of it. The final step that you have to do before you're really finished is save this file. Notice that right now it's untitled one. Um, you need to save it and then probably back it up. So I'm gonna say file, save as. I'm gonna name the file scan. And um, I'm gonna keep this PSD file extension. That means my file format is in Photoshop's native format. And that's what I want because it will be uncompressed. There are some other uncompressed formats like TIFF, but I'm gonna stick with the Photoshop file format for now. And I prefer for my assignments that you do as well. Um, and then I'm gonna save this into my home folder. I already have one because I did this once before, but I'll, I'll save it again. And now that the file is saved, you can exit from Photoshop. So quit Photoshop. And now um, I will find my scan file and I'm gonna back it up onto my USB and my um, network storage. So to do that, I'll just grab it by its icon and drag it first to my USB. There goes the copy. And then, uh, just better safe than sorry, I'll drag it onto my network storage as well. There it goes. Now I have this file backed up in both places. And so I feel pretty, pretty confident that I'm not going to lose it. And that's scanning in the SCC Graphics Lab. Go to it.